Good morning, everybody. This is Consciousness Rising, Mind Your Head. It is Friday the... What's the date? Friday the... 5th. 5th. Is yes, it the 5th? Yeah. Firework night, guys. Um, anyway, I'm really, really pleased and happy to have uh, Natasha here with me today. Hello. Uh, who we do all our serving together, don't we? We do. We go out into the world and we uh, hold people to account. But um, one of the things that I talked about before was... Um, the possibility of to having a chat together uh, about common law, serving the notices, um, and looking at the legalese and the language. Um, most of you know how to serve notices now. We've kind of um, put up quite a lot of videos of us, haven't we? We have. Doing our thing. Um, but what we thought would be really useful is to help people understand maritime law language. So whether you're uh, deciding not to pay your community charge, whether you are uh, talking to the police, or whether you are understanding common law, the language is key, isn't it, Tash? Yes, it most certainly is. So we thought we'd do a little series of vids, sort of looking at the language and explaining it. So, where should we start? Should we start with the words sort of legal and lawful? Yes. So put in like real simple terms, so legal is the law of the sea and commerce, and it refer, uh, refers to persons, people. And then lawful is law of the land, and that relates to living men and women, human beings. That's sort of put very simply. So when we're serving notices, we are serving lawful notices. And legal, because we use both, don't we? We're using both. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking in their language in a lawful way. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if something is legal, then it's come from maritime law. Absolutely, yeah, commerce. If, okay, if it's lawful, it's common law. And yeah, law of the land. The law of universal the land. Universal law, God's law, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Real law. Law, in, law that stands in truth. Yeah. Right, okay, that's good. So um, we thought one of the things that we've realised is that when we're born... Uh, and we we are registered by our parents who unwittingly don't realise what the process of registration does. We are signed over to the Maritime Corporation via our birth sticker. Is that right, Tash? Yes. So I don't know if most people probably would have heard the same thing where we're kind of told that our birth certificates are written in capital letters. So I thought I'll get some of the birth certificates out of the drawer. And actually all four of the birth certificates in my family... It's only the surname that's uh, written in capital letters and the uh, four names are written in what I just call like normal, as in a capital letter. Small the letters. Beginning, and then yeah. yeah, small letters afterwards. So I thought, oh, okay, that's interesting. So I did a little bit of research on it and apparently um, addressing uh, a legal fiction is generally um, accompanied by writing all or part of your name in capital letters. So that kind of explains that really. So your legal fiction is your maritime law created self? Yes. So, I mean, when your name's written like this, in this sort of capital letter, then lowercase, lower case. that means you're lawful person. Mm. When it's written all in lowercase, that means you're universal person, you know, you're complete sort of free person, if you like. And then when it's written in capital letters, that indicates you're a dead entity and that's your corporation. Right. So on the birth certificate, it looks to me like the names are written lawful in the lowercase. So that's like your Christian name, your given your, name which by is your parents. Your, yeah, which is your name under Christ. That's what Christian means, your, yeah. Christ, your name under Christ. And then your surname, which is the corporate aspect. Yeah, which is your, your dead entity. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's how these ones are done. I'm pretty sure that some people probably have got birth certificates all in capitals. It'd be interesting to hear if anybody has, actually. Mm. Interesting to go and have a little look. Uh, and then it's interesting, so the ink colour. So red, red ink generally signifies the living man, the flowing blood. Yeah. And uh, one certificate here has got all the boxes in red and the writing in red. Mm -hmm. And then everything that's printed out is written in black, and that represents congealed blood and death, mm. basically. But then this, the other birth certificate I've got here is all the boxes are in black. And the typing's in black, which I thought was interesting. So that person's obviously double dead. Double <laughs> dead. No Not just red. dead, but double dead. <laughs> there's no red on this one. But there's more information here. And it also shows um, the mother and the father and the maiden name. Again, all in these capitals. Yeah. 
uh, letters. Yeah. And it's also interesting that uh, there's a bit here where one of the parents has to sign and it's called the signature of the informant, Mm -hmm. uh, which is quite interesting, isn't it? So basically the parent has informed the state that a child has been born. And then what happens is a, uh, what you'd call, I think it's a registrar, they're called registrars, yes. then yes. signs. And what they actually say is that they certify that the above particulars have been compiled from an entry in a register in my custody. And then it's signed. So this birth certificate is kind of proving that we're basically signing our sons and daughters, over. making them children, signing them over to the state, which is then when we become parents and of course if you break that word down legalese wise you split your words into the two. pair the pair that rent the child exactly from the state yes so the first trap in maritime law is the birth certificate trap yes because you're effectively signing your baby over to the state because registration means we looked up what registration meant i can't remember now but it didn't it mean you're passing something over when yeah, you register it's kind of like, it it's almost like register in my custody yeah you're basically yeah, you're handing over your belongings back. yeah yeah belongings over and it's also interesting that it says it says warning i don't know what needs to be a warning but a certificate is not evidence of identity so it's got nothing to do with identity you and yeah this we, is a bond basically yeah and yet we use them all the time for identity don't we we're asked to yeah we're asked to yeah. As, as, as proof of who we are so basically that's the beginning of us signing ourselves over and our sovereignty over to a corrupt state system of maritime law. Yeah, yeah so we're basically becoming a resource and we're placed in a trust as a commodity with the world and the Vatican banks by having this. Basically, we become a sweat equity being. This birth certificate registers you as a dead thing. So therefore, that means you become a person or a corporation. Mm -hmm. And to do business legally, you have to be brought back from the dead, which is where we'll go on to the next bit of of, of how it works, basically. So it's just good to start at the very beginning with your birth certificate. Um, I'm not going to show them in any detail because they've got people's (laughs) details on. But uh, as you can see, that one's all in black. And think about how many forms we have to fill in where they say black ink only, capital letters. Yeah? Yes. That is by design. And there's the one with the red The whole point in using red would mean that you are signing as the living human being. Yeah. And that's your blood, you know. I mean, since learning all this, I now write in purple all the time. They say purple. I've read that purple is a sign of uh, the crown. Right. And uh, like religion, if you like, it's a kind of a godly colour, I suppose. Well, which is that's apt. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but yeah, that's... But I thought purple. Yeah, I thought it was about sovereignty. Yeah, they use sovereignty. The law, but it is so... also a crown, a colour that that I've read. Um, specifically, when it's on the birth certificates, apparently some birth certificates will have purple stamps on them. Okay. Mine don't. Yeah, mine don't. Um, so there's obviously, I mean, that's mad in itself, isn't it? How different they all are. Yeah, We've it got is all a bit these different. But the consistent thing is the registering and signing the child over and the fact that the surname will always be in capital letters. Yes. Because okay. that's your straw man, that's your legal co- fiction, your legal fiction um, under maritime law. Um, so I'm basically then we should be writing in red. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we should, but of course we're not allowed, are we? No. We're never allowed to sign not anything allowed to, in red. No, not and allowed to use red. if you tried as hard as you like to get your birth certificate to have your surname in lowercase it will not happen you cannot change that you know nobody's been able to have that done it, it's an impossibility i guess it would make the certificate null and void in yeah. there for them for their purposes so there's mm. no point in in having having that no and then the rest of the things so if you think about your bank statements your uh, driving license your passport all of that is your name both names and your in, bills yeah that both names then become both um, uppercase yeah basically yeah so if we move on to uh, legalese and word splitting, they like to split words to confuse. Yeah. So you have a prefix and a suffix. Um, and this is how they use a word against you in law. Yeah. Basically. So let's think about the suffix ice, I-C-E. Mm-hmm. So the purpose of being in commerce is to be dead or on ice. So to be off ice, let's think Office, yeah. Off ice, yeah. Is to be alive 
in office. Mm -hmm. So in corporation as a dead person, you are taken office. Yeah. So off ice and therefore an off icer, an officer in business. Right. Which is interesting, isn't it? So that's yeah. kind of like how that works in office. And then, of course, when you're no longer needed, so if you have you have to hand in your notice. Yeah. Not ice again. Ice. So you're not on ice because you've handed in your notice and you're no longer a contract with that particular corporation that you would have been doing business with or working with. Off ice with. Yeah. 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 So that, I thought that was quite an interesting word. So then let's think about this word in corporations. So where this... this um, suffix is used in corporations so mm. we've got things like uh justice mm. injustice mm -hmm. malpractice mm. we've got an officer we've mm. got service mm. invoice we've got practice and even the word police even though we don't say ice it's, it's still pol got, ice yeah got pol ice and then of course another, i might call them that from now on hello pol ice, pol ice <laughs> officer <laughs> Yeah, well, nice. and another good one is uh, just the government. It's just an easy one to do, as in how they use the, the uh, split the word and the suffix. Yeah. yeah. So obviously, govern is to to control or to rule, mm -hmm. and the word meant is the mind. And there's a lot of words that end in m e m e n t. So government means to rule your to rule the mind. Yeah. To rule. Wow. The mind. And if you think about, there's a lot of words that I can't think of any as we speak, but there's a lot of words that do end in munt enjoyment supplement supplement. So it's all to do with the mind, that, yeah. that, that sort of suffix at the end of the... So when they break down the two words, yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of trickery with the words that are being used and yes. the meaning behind those words. Yeah. And we don't understand. Yeah. And it's kind of like a spell, really. It is spell. It is spell casting, actually. It this is. is what we've realised. Yeah. This is why talking about words and what they mean and where they've come from is really important. Very important. So then it goes into how... When we talk about banking, because obviously we now know that the birth certificate is a bond. And yep. it's used on the, the Tra stock. They trade yeah, they with trade it. They trade it with the stock yep. and stuff like that. So then you look at banking words. So just let's just let's think of a few. So you've got the word account, as in your bank account. Yeah. Now that is actually the head count of the men on board the ship. That's what that actually means. And then we've got the word current C which goes into currency. Even something like rebate, when you have a rebate from something, that's to rehook your fish. Oh, of course, because you bait your back, line. Yeah, and put it back put on it the out. bank. Okay. Uh, so we've got, oh, balance. So like bank balance, that means you'll not be thrown overboard if you've got good balance. Okay. Um, and then draft was an interesting word. So that's the depth of a boat beneath the water. Have you seen the lines on boats? And yeah. They've got like the lines. So that's what, that's what a draft so is. So the draft is the bit below the water. Yeah. So that's interesting, isn't it? So you have an overdraft, overdraft which means so it gets you above water. Uh, so of it course, helps you yeah. With your, yeah, with your money. Helps you to stay afloat. Yeah. So oh, then God. banking, really, it sort of has two entities. And again, they're both related to the sea. So you've got onshore, which is your inland revenue coming in. Okay. And then you've got your offshore banking. And that's obviously your offshore banking where people have money offshore and hide their money. Yeah. Again, all just sort of the same sort of terms. I mean, there's so many more. I can just read a few yeah, out. Yeah, read a few. Uh, so you've got your bank balance, and that apparently is a balance sh ship. You've got your hard cash, liquid cash, you know, loan shark is an interesting one, isn't it? Mm. Um, what have we got? So yeah. tide means yeah. you over with cash. So you tied somebody over with cash. Is there any there that you quite... Um, what about there? Withdraw. Withdraw. Draw water. Um, yeah, bailed out. Like a boat needs to be bailed out to keep it afloat. So they're all references to ships, yeah. boating, maritime, you know, the sea. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, we say we're drowning in debt. We've got our, hover, uh, our heads just above water. Money goes through your fingers like water. Yeah. Um, you float on the, ex stock, stock, uh, the stock exchange. You can be awash with cash. Um, and, you know, you can have a company that's watertight. It's yeah. doing really well. It's really watertight. So yeah. the ships thing, again, all names of ships are always in capital letters. And you get the HMS or the RMS, which the RMS is the um, Royal Mail shipping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they deliver products. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you notice cars and their uh, number plates, they're all capitalised as well. So anything capitalised is part of corporation? Yes, it's registration language. Right. I okay. think it's probably the best way yeah. to describe it. Yeah. And then, so we look at the word ship again. Have you noticed how many wor everyday words that we use with the word ship at the end? Yeah, relationship. So even, so if it was anything to do with religion, 
worship, work, you've got workmanship, craftsmanship, then you've got education, so you have a scholarship, a sponsorship, mm. an internship, uh, relations, friendship, relationship, partnership. And what does ship mean as a, obviously we know it means ship, but... It means a, a vessel, yeah. So something that's holding... A vessel, something that carries something. Yeah, a vessel. And it also delivers, doesn't it? Holding, yeah. A ship delivers, it delivers goods. Yes. It delivers goods. Your ship has come in. Yeah, and even if you buy something, it's ownership. If you join something, it's a membership. Yeah. If you win something, it's a championship. Yeah, yeah. So I did jot down, there's loads of words there, look. I've got all those. Yeah. All those different words ending in ship. Ship. Mm. Me- mediumship, musicianship, ownership. It's just, yeah, ladyship, lordship. Yeah. Just interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Like we don't really think about that word yet. No. There it is at the end of so many of everyday words. words that we use. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and leading on with the capital letters thing as well, it can lead us on to um, when we die Yeah. as well. So if you go to a graveyard and you look at all the gravestones, you won't see... Mrs. Rebecca Clifton or Mrs. Natasha Knight or Natasha in lowercase, it would always just be your name capitalised. Mine's just going to have Gobby Cow written on it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be quite funny, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, everyone know, we know who that is. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, so, so it's all capitals again. Yeah, I know Mr. or Mrs. Um, so basically when you die, you're given a death certificate and this uh, certificate is signalling signaling that you can no longer trade in commerce. So it's finished. Therefore, your corporation, which is, is what you is, are in is, capital letters, is dead. It's finished. Which is why you'll be called a corpse, which is the end of the corporation. End of the corporation. So yeah. it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty serious stuff, isn't it? So it's used from the from minute we're born. To from, death. Yeah, yeah. We are uh, a corporation. A we've, money-making cow. And we've unwittingly, without knowing, passed ourselves over to that. Our parents. A parents. Our parents. rents. Yeah. yeah. But then, you know, when I had my kids, I didn't think twice about yeah. it. I just went and registered them because actually, that's what you do. That's what you do. But actually, when you're first born, you have something called a live birth register, which happens in hospitals and I presume home births as well. I can only presume that's the same sort well, of thing. The midwife does uh, it. The midwife would do it. And it's uh, where it has to be reported. So the mother's name, yep. the sex of the baby and uh, the place of the birth. And that gets reported to the government. And then you have 42 days mm. to then register the birth mm. with this. So if you decided not to register the birth, I mean, I do know of a few people who yeah. haven't registered. You'll get hounded with fines. You do get hounded. Hounded. Absolutely um, hounded. But actually, they know the child's been born because they've been on the there live. There has been a live birth. Yeah. Yeah. So there's two. So we have two certificates. Um, yeah. The live birth and then this uh, certificate. Which is the court, which yeah. is sort of tricking us into becoming part of their cooperative yeah. business yeah basically yeah um where can we go from that we can talk a little bit about brown envelopes or envelopes with windows which I think yeah is this, this really freaked me out i was like oh my god it's all so morbid so you know you get the manila uh ones and they normally come from say like dvla banks uh no the banks are normally white oh yes they? yes the, okay the DVLA. Ones, dvla you get the income tax yes um court summons Benefits letters. Benefits letters. Always in a brown like envelope. Always come in a brown envelope. Yeah. So the brown basically represents the earth. Okay. If you like. Yeah. You know, think of the mud and the earth and stuff like that. Yeah. And then basically in that you always have a window box. You'll never have any of this mail written to you. No. Nope. Always has a window, doesn't it? And it always has a window box, and that your name would be capitalised. Mm. That represents your coffin, your open coffin, and then the name inside represents you. So you're basically. A dead entity. In lost a, at sea. Lost at sea. Generating money for corporate businesses. And what you've got Brilliant. to remember is a corporation can only do business with another corporation. A corporation can't do business with a living man or woman. And this is why our names are capitalised and this is how they can trade with us. So this is how co- standing in common law and your sovereignty works. Because you step out of the corporation, you, the, cap, the, the you with the capital letters, and you stand in your sovereignty as uh, an independent, well, you're a living woman or man on the land. Because we are, um, we're not at sea. Definitely so therefore, <laughs> maritime law on the land is, um, 
inappropriate and unlawful. It's unlawful. It's unlawful. basically unlawful, unlawful yeah. Uh, it's pirating, actually. And it can only be governed with consent. Yes. And this is what we need to remember. Yeah. So actually, understanding the first thing that you have to do is step out of maritime law completely um, and stop all dealings as a as you with yourself as a corporate corporation yep. and stop trading or doing business with those corporations i.e they all the government agencies and, and all of that electric water yep. all of your tax. yeah your bills and actually stand in common law sovereignty of being a living man or woman living on the land with the the rights that go with yeah with that yeah so because a lot of people want to stand in common law, but they feel like they can't, mm. they can't step but out it, of it. It comes from within. You don't need to sign oaths. You don't need to do any of that. Yeah. You just, I mean, watch the Strawman videos. Know who you are. Yeah. Know who you are within, and live within that. Within that, and you've got to get rid of fear. You know, court summons, all these sorts of things. They're all addressed to your. Uh, your, your, your your straw man your legal fiction yeah. you know if you don't end, identify as that person you're not contracting you're not contracting because they cannot contract with a living human being and all contracts in, in these statutes and these acts they're all governed by consent yeah. all of it yeah so if we're not consenting you know then i'm not natasha knight in capital letters no you know and i now when i sign something i sign lowercase just my first name yeah i don't all even put, I don't that even is put the, my that's surname. universal that's your universal being yeah basically that's my being under god yeah. or whatever yeah yeah so i mean i i i've kind of stepped out of all that i did do my oath and i know you did do your oath under the magna carta and i think that if you want to do that that's fine um but as soon as you understand how the government is treasonous anyway it's a treasonous yeah, corporation. You cannot be part of that no. if you live in your sovereignty. Once you know, um, if you are a lawful person, this is how I look on it. So I stand under British constitutional law. I am breaking the law by doing business with that government. So therefore, by not paying my poll tax, etc., I am being lawful because I don't want to fund that. Um, You've got it exactly in yeah. mind there. So yeah. when they're sending me stuff... I just send it back and say, I'm really, you know, I don't say I'm really sorry. I just say, <laughs> I'm, really not sorry. No, I'm really not sorry. But that's not who but I am. <laughs> I am a lawful woman living on the land. I stand under British constitutional law. I cannot possibly trade or do business with a treasonous corporation. Write that on the envelope, stick it yeah, back in the stick box. Stick it back in the box. Yeah. So I thought we'd just finish it off with a bit of a fun one with words, as we've been talking about words. So what about the rule of three? The rule of three, yeah. So it's considered unholy or unlucky, isn't it, when things come in three? We always go, oh, bad luck, this has happened, or there'll be two more things, you know. Oh, yeah, we always say it comes yeah. in three. So, yeah, we yeah, always yeah. think it comes in three. Yeah. And then witches in Macbeth always repeat things three times. It's yeah. part of their sort of spell casting, if you like. Yeah. And then religious terms, you've got Trinity, which obviously is, is a three thing. The Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. So psychology-wise, so we know that humans can you know, uh, retain lots of facts, but it's considered and proven to be most effective in the subconscious when things are remembered in groups of three. three. And that could be numbers, letters, words, or whatever. So here we go again. Let's think of some of the uh, things that we say. Trust your instincts. Mm. Less is more. Life goes on. Practice makes perfect. Ready, steady, go. Hands, face, space. Yes. There's We're a lot of threes yes, in all there's that. There's a lot of threes. We could talk about that one in a minute, definitely. And also, what about TV channels and things like that? Yeah. So BBC, ITV, I can't think what the American ones are, MTV. but they're all threes. MTV. Um, uh, and then CNS, what, is it? Or yeah, CBS C or something? CBS. And then what about sporting things? You've got the NBA, the N, what's the other one? NFL, the National Football League in America. They come in threes. And then you've got the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, MI6, MI5, NHS. Yeah. So lots of those. And then it also goes through to even things like nursery rhymes. So characters come in threes. The three amigos, the three musketeers, the three little pigs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the three bears. So basically it's used uh, as a form of hypnotism really and uh, it's manipulating your subconscious without you realising. So they're using this rule of three to mm. entice you into their spells, I suppose, if we're going to... 
Yeah, I mean, it relates a little bit with uh, when I started working with runes and I was invo learning how to invoke runes and I was told by the runes to call them three times. The first time to wake the rune, the second time to connect with the rune and the third time to invoke the rune. So if you think about the spell casting, mm. it's that third one to the third, third time the is the, yeah, is the boom yeah it's like wow yeah 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 and then so the governments use things like we need you and then you've got the black lives matter you've got catch it bin it kill it what was the one you said face uh, hands face space hands face space yeah so they're using it all the time and it's basically going into our subconscious and then um you've also got it in things like uh, retailers or estate agents use like location 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 yeah they? and that yeah. gets us in and then um some is it summon summoning spirits they use beetlejuice 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 mm. Uh, and then I think like Tony Blair, did he use was he education, education, education? education. education. Yeah. Uh, and then I almost think as well was didn't Thatcher do no no no? She used to do a no no no, and she always did that in well, threes. I kind of blanked her out for trauma. Her out. Yeah. And then you've got the really silly ones as well, the softy things like oh dear dear and oh my my, you know, all of these things in threes. So it's just interesting how they use these spells. Well, we, and we know that they use numerology and numbers as well, don't we? Mm. But that's a whole that's other... a whole other one. A whole other one. Yeah, so there we go. Just so that, we yeah, that. so that's the first part. We're going to do a few of these. Um, but that's just to give you a really good understanding of how we um, unintentionally are contracted in and how we can then intentionally mm. step out. It's very easy you are not a corporation, you are a living human. And as soon as you understand that... You know that you are the law. Yeah, and you stand in your sovereignty and you mm. do not do business with treasonous corporations, you're free. Yeah. So one thing we will talk about next time, which I just think is quite an interesting what? one, is marriage and how it's all connected to a horse ceremony, as in a clippity clop knee <laughs> ceremony. Ooh. So start thinking about some of those words. Yeah. And, uh, connected yeah. with horses connected with horses and, and marriage and, and marriage. we'll do a little chat about that next time yep. sounds like fun <laughs> and we we'll also do one on how to talk to the police yes and what was the other one we thought oh about entertainment and the brainwashing aspect of the television and stuff so we're going to look at the words um, used, used, used in, used there, in, in the that. media and stuff yeah. like that so um, it's been lovely to Thanks um, for having me. Oh, I love, I've been <laughs> waiting so long to have Tash with me. I'm she's, shy. She's very shy, but um, she's hilarious. And she, I just think it's right for you to be here, Tash, because we do so much of our work yeah. together, don't we? So um, we will be back next week with part two, which will be, should we do police? Yeah. Or should police? we do? Or should we do nay? Oh, let's do nay. <laughs> let's do yeah. marriages and horses. Yes, we'll do marriages and horses. Anyway, on that note, have a lovely weekend and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.